Hey gang, Carl White here. You are listening to Loan Officer Freedom, number one podcast in the world today for loan officers. And I'm broadcasting from the secret headquarters of the Mortgage Marketing Animals slash Freedom Club here in the uh, communications headquarters. Uh, those of you who are watching this by video, and I'm joined today with my long-term partner, Miss Tammy Schneider. How are you doing, Tammy? I am doing fantastic, Carl, and I'm very excited to be on the show today, and I'm very excited about our subject matter today. I like this topic, too. So somebody asked me, uh, Carl, what are you guys known for? Which, by the way, is a really good thing to have in your mind of what you are known for so that you know to accentuate those things. Yes. Right? And so what we're known for, and we actually have two businesses, so we're actually in the mortgage business, Tammy and I, and I'm the branch manager uh, for an organization, and uh, uh, it, it's likely that it might be the top, uh, literally, branch uh, and, and, and team uh, in the mortgage industry today with the volume that we do is astounding. It, 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 it shocks even me. And, and again, like I like to say it is, is these people are on my team. Each one of these people have honored me for me to be a part of their team is how I look at it. But anyway, so we have a mortgage uh, business that we do. And then we have a training business, which is just a natural progression of what did we do to become a, a top team of loan officers uh, in the nation from our mortgage business that we get paid on each loan. What, then to just share that with other loan officers and other organizations uh, for, 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 for them to have that big growth. So the three things we're known for is number one, epic growth, right? Is teaching loan officers how to have the same epic growth that we have. And, and the numbers uh, to this epic growth is astounding. So it's, it's like somebody asked me the other day, um, Carl, can you help me increase by 20%? And, and I told him the truth. I said, I, I don't think I can because if you implement what we show you to do, it'll be more than that. It's likely to be way more than that. Like the 20% is not epic. And 20, epic is, I mean. Double, triple, quadruple. Yep. We've, seen, we've even seen a 10 times or. We, we, we absolutely have. And we have some people in our, uh, in, our, um, in our training group that literally their team literally are closing. Uh, I'm thinking of uh, one guy uh, down in uh, uh, Sarasota area. He's at over $1 billion. Just, one, just, just him, just him. He's one member in the Freedom Club and just him is over a billion dollars. We have another one just joined not too long ago. It's two and a half billion dollars in production. And we have some that are at, that, that just came in and they're at five loans a month or six loans a month looking to grow from there, right? So it's all in, but anyway, so I don't know how to grow 20% because if, if it's my belief that if you implement what we implement or what we tell you to or what we show you to, what we're doing in our own business, that it's, it's, it's way past 20%. Yes. So, all right. So number one, epic growth. Uh, number two, everybody knows I'm real big on this. No weekends, no evenings. If you think you can't run your mortgage business, uh, without working evenings or weekends, I'd recommend you listen to previous episodes of this podcast. And we might talk about that subject again here coming up because I'm incredibly passionate about that. And then number three, so epic growth, no weekends, no evenings, and, uh, and no cold calling. And so I personally, and I thought about this one, I personally, to my, to my memory, and it's been a long, I've been doing this a long time and obviously written, you know, gotten paid on and being part of a team that's closed thousands and thousands and thousands of loans. I, I can't remember ever myself ever making a cold call. Now, I, I am confident that if you were to place me in, say, the middle of, I don't know, just pick, say Utah, just came back from there. What a cool place, by the way. So if you placed me in Utah and somehow you could take it so that nobody knew me there, right? Could I grow a mortgage business there knowing what I know now, knowing nobody? And the answer is yes. Yes. I could do it very, very rapidly. It's, it's my firm belief that within 20 days, I'm, I'm sorry, within uh, 90 days, it's my firm belief I could start from scratch and I could be, I could have 20 loans closing on the fourth month. I, I really believe I could do that, right? Uh, so while these methods that we talk about, you could do it not knowing anybody. We've seen that. We, and we have seen that, yeah, no so, question. Yeah, the 20 times or that we have. That's true. Didn't that, know a soul. That's true. We've had one person in our group that's literally 20 times his business and, and knew nobody. Her. Her. Yes. She knew nobody. Uh, Kristen Jameson. Yes. Like knew, knew nobody. But I'm going to tell you that's, uh, that's going to be the exception. Uh, again, not that you can't do that. We just don't recommend it. We recommend uh, never doing a call. Anybody that's been through any of our training knows that that's what we specialize in is never doing any cold call. 
And so I thought we would talk about number one, how do you have epic growth? Number two, no weekends or evenings. And then number three, no cold calls. And we got to pick one to pick on first, Tammy, which one do you want to pick on today? Well, I, I think the biggest thing that is the hindrance for people growing their business is the fear of rejection, the fear of making those calls, I guess, call reluctance, is it? And mm -hmm. so why don't we do um, that today and then we'll work on the other ones on another podcast. Okay, I like that. So the, the, so the, the big thing on call reluctance is uh, in, in the fear of making phone calls, I think, is simply because, like what you just nailed it, people are afraid of the, the fear of rejection. Yeah. And one thing that I've always kept in mind is when people say no to you, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting your offer. I kind of liken it to going to a restaurant for dessert. And so you've had the most fantastic meal of your life. And then the waitress comes up and says, would you like dessert? And you say, no, thank you. She doesn't run back to the kitchen crying her eyes out and say, I'm going to quit my job because they hate me. They just said, no, I don't want dessert. I'm full. I'm full. So mm -hmm. the same thing applies in our business. If we ask someone for any kind of anything and they say, no, thank you. It just means I'm full. I, I don't need your service right then and there, yeah. but maybe call me again. Because if I go to the same exact restaurant and she asks me 10 times in a row and we get to kind of know each other and she's like, oh my gosh, you have to try the dessert. One of those times I'm going to have dessert. I'm mm -hmm. telling you. Yeah. Um, and so one of these times, if, you, if you're consistent and persistent in your business, they will say yes. And you know, I think one of the things that holds people back uh, 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 to making phone calls, uh, particularly you know, to let's say the cold call thing again, is like a lot of people paint that out as a bad thing. And, and, and while our teaching teaches not against it, but teaches ways for sure, you know, that, that, that our, our entire program is based on not making cold calls, that um, but we have I think seen people, people make those cold calls and still be successful. Well, so, so I think the people that avoid that type of activity, not avoid it. They're afraid of that type of activity because if you can make a warm call, which is what, what we're going to talk about today is how, how we've epically built our business, never making a cold call and never recommend that you do. I think the people that fear that, I think it's a worthy thing where they think I'm not worthy of making this call because a person is going to receive my call. And because I don't think I'm worthy, they're not going to think I'm worthy either. And I think a lot of it is just people that have experienced issues in their life where they've, uh, and we've all been through stuff right? I don't want to get too heavy here, Yeah. but we all go through stuff where they feel like I'm not worthy of it or I'm not good enough or, um, what if they say yes, and then I can't do a good job. Yeah. Or what if they say, no, it'll prove to them and to me, this thing that I think I'm not worthy because I've, I've gone through things in my life, maybe parents, uh, maybe, you know, typically I think it would be parents actually. So again, I don't want to get too heavy into this. This is a real passionate thing of mine that I just want to let you know, as you're listening to this uh, today, that you are worthy. Uh, it's my firm belief that all of us are, are worthy of greatness and doing great things. And so if we've had things go through life where asking for the business scares you, just know that you're worthy of asking for that business. And we're going to talk about different ways today to just reaffirm that. So was that too heavy? I think it was perfect. Okay. Someone, someone, if even one person needed that message, it was yeah. perfect. Yeah. So to that one person, I'm talking to you right now, you are worthy. And I, I really believe that from the bottom of my heart because I so, look at the growth that we've had yes. and the success that we've had. And, and, and my first thought would be, I, I'm just a normal guy. You know, you're just a normal lady. And yet we've seen this incredible growth. And so that just taught me that, well, if I can do it, it's my belief. Anybody, anybody. can do it. And if I'm worthy of it, so is everybody. Right. So, yeah. so, it's, so let's start off first by defining what a cold call is to me. A cold call is opening up the phone book, closing your eyes, going like that, and then calling someone you've never ever heard of met, don't know anything about them. That's cold. Yeah. I would, I would definitely recommend not doing that. So right. anybody's been through our training knows that, uh, that's certainly something that we teach against because it's too easy. You're going, not that that wouldn't work using the right scripts. Cause I, I, I'm a firm believer if you used our scripts and, and did that method, it would still be successful, but I think it would be, well, we know it would be even more successful if you're calling people that you already know, or that already knows you or that that's knows someone, a, you know, or that's right. Yeah. Or that you're currently working with, yeah. like say the listing agent. So let's talk about some of these ways to, to make sure that you never have to do a cold call, 
that, um, and, and I'm going to tell you, um, operating your business without making a phone call, I personally don't know of anybody that's doing that successfully. Even Quicken, when they, when they write, the, when they, when they, the, the, uh, the, the, what's that app, the Rocket Mortgage app, all it is is an opt-in. As soon as they opt-in, they call you and they, they conduct their business on the phone. So the phone is, is where the business is made at. Uh, 99.9% .9 of the time, all the top, a hundred percent of the top producers. So, are, yeah. are and you know, to, to that end, we're not, um, uh, one size fits all. I mean, we have a lot of different ways that you can bring in business and we totally believe in marrying online and offline. That's, so that, that's, that's a great point. So, yeah. so let's talk, well, that, so, that'll, let's that'll talk lead into it. some of these ways. So, so yeah. how do you, how do you, how do you, how do you have epic growth and, and, uh, without ever making a cold call? So a couple of ways that we teach. Uh, so the first thing is you have to get a list together of the top agents in your area. And why it, would you do that? Well, the, the main reason is, is although everyone is worthy of friendship, relationship, uh, having a glass of wine, going to a uh, barbecue or something like that with, not everyone is worth your business time. When, you're, when we're trying to make sure that you're not working on the weekends, every moment counts mm. so when you're working from nine to five you have to be calling on people who are qualified to send you loans because they could be the nicest real estate agent in the whole wide world if they only close one in the entire year it's not worth your business time to call them and take them to a coffee or have a dinner with they don't them have any referrals like to that. give you even if they wanted to right right even if they right. wanted to so when if they didn't mm -hmm. send me a referral it's not a reflection of me it's just a reflection of they don't they don't have anybody Right. They right. don't have anybody to refer to me. So the first thing you need to do is get a list of all the qualified agents in your uh, area that you want to market. And, now, and what's our people, definition of, all, of, of our, qualified? Our definition of qualified is if you close eight buyer side transactions or more in a calendar year. So that makes you qualified. Okay. And so, um, and, and guys, we always say get a bigger cup. So you don't have to farm just your little uh, town that you're in. I have news for you. You can write in your entire state. Yeah, or some of them in multiple so, and states. Yeah, multiple states, but at least you have your entire state. So, you know, get a bigger cup if you want to. Now, it's easier if, you, if you're trying to do coffees to have them write in your area, but we even have people who do virtual coffees. And so that doesn't even have to be um, a, a hindrance to you as well. So get your million dollar list. And you're going to look for uh, people who are qualified, which are eight buyer transactions or more. And you can get the list in a multiple of places. Uh, MLS, you yeah. can get it from there. And that you can get from uh, brokers that you know, real estate agents that you know, appraisers that you know, maybe it's a title agent, your local board of realtors. And so they, just a a, they just do a search on the MLS list and say, show me a, uh, show me a list of all the agents that closed eight buyer size or more in the last 12 months. Boom, here's your list. And yeah. for each million people or divisions of or multiples of, for each million people, you'll have about a thousand agents that are qualified. Right. So here in the Tampa Bay area, I think we got like 3 million people or something like that here in this area. So in our area, there's going to be, give or take, about 3,000 qualified. qualified agents. I just so came plenty in from, to choose from plenty, my friends. Plenty to choose from. I just came back from Salt Lake City. I think they have like, what they say, like 700,000 people live there. So there's going to be somewhere around 700 or so uh, qualified agents. So... So we get the list of qualified agents. Now we look at that list and we, I guess the first thing to do is just look on that list. Who do you know? Is there anyone that you already know? You've been to a closing with them before. They're already doing business with you before. You, maybe you met them at a friend's house or something like that. Anybody who knows or your the, name. At the soccer field, you, they might, 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 you might've met them at a soccer field or just, just any, any kinds of ways. Who on that list do you know? And I'll challenge you that it would be, I, I would challenge anybody to be listening to this today. You look at the list of qualified agents in your area. I guarantee you're going to know agents on there that are qualified, uh, meaning they're, they're top producers, right? They're closing at least eight buyer sides or more per year that you know, that's not sending you business. Man, if I was going to go, if I was going to look for referrals, that's the first place that I would go. Cause one thing that we have found is that a referred lead one of the reasons why we're able to close so many loans and, and people in our group, we have, we have uh, uh, members in our group that are closing uh, one and a half billion dollars a year. We have another guy uh, just joined. He's closing like 2.3 billion uh, of closings per the year. The reason why we do that is we're incredibly efficient with what we do and we're incredibly efficient with our time. 
So, uh, so the reason why we prefer to work with real estate agents as a general rule is because their conversions are much higher. The reason why we're able to close the kinds of volumes that we do is because we, we, we put into play strategies and techniques that have higher than average closing ratios so that we're not talking to a hundred people trying to close two out of that hundred. So, so if you're, if you're using strategies where your closing ratio is anything less than say 25%, uh, you need to figure out a way to automate that and add to it ways that'll close 25% or, or more. So that's kind of our benchmark that uh, on a referred lead about half are qualified and we close about half of those. So if I want to close four deals for this month, it's real simple math. I need 16 leads. If I want to close 50 leads, uh, 50 deals this month, real simple math. I just need 200 leads uh, and, and of referred leads. And not that we don't do some of the other stuff, the online, we do, we do a lot of that. I, I probably spend more in Facebook ads likely than anybody listening to this today, uh, testing different ways and, and figuring that stuff out. And it works. It just, it closes at a ratio, even, even with, with all the automation around four or 5%, which is okay, which is good as long as it's automated, but it's not as good as the referred leads, which close it say 25%. So who on that list do you know that you could call on? And we're not going to talk about all the scripting today. Maybe we can do that in a part two here, but just that those are the people that I would target would be who's qualified that I already know. And for most of you that's listening this day, that's going to be enough, right? Most of you go, cause keep in mind, every time you get an agent to start referring to you. And again, we're talking about the qualified agents. Let's say if you make an average of $2,000 per deal, like so, so Tammy, let's say you're, you're a real estate agent and I know you from church, just saying, and I start uh, calling you using our scripts that, uh, again, we already know each other, not a cold call. And you start referring to me and you refer me one closing per month, not 10, not two, not three, one per month. If I make an average of $2,000 per closing, that means that our relationship is now worth mucho to me personally, by the way. But financially, it's worth about $24,000 a year. You want to make an extra 100000 Just get four. Not that there's four of you, Tammy, because there's only <laughs> one of you. But just get four referring agents, and you just got a hundred grand raise. I mean, this is like the simplest, easiest. Like things, you know, one of the things that, 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 that Tammy, that you and I do, that, that do avail us a lot of money, is we eliminate any unnecessary steps. Now, could I get those referrals? putting in, well, first I do that, and then I do this, and then I do this, and then I do this, and then I call on them, and then I do this, and then I do that. You can. It's just every time you add a step, you're decreasing the amount of volume that you can close on. You don't want to do that. So you want to have as few steps as possible so that you can have as many closings as possible, which is why people in our, in our, in our, in our Freedom Club, we have, uh, I think, the highest average uh, – production of, of, of any group that I know of, you know, some by far, I don't know if anybody's got people closing one and a half, two billion dollars uh, a year. And it's simply because we eliminate steps that's unnecessary, including cost that are unnecessary. And uh, so call on those agents that you already know that you've been afraid to call on in the past. Uh, just call on them. And, and, and when you do call on them, you don't have to, you don't have to you don't have to bring gifts per se. I don't have to bring you bags of gold coins for you to start referring to me. I can, I can, there's nothing wrong with that as long as I'm willing to pay for bags of gold. But what if I can do it without bringing bags of gold? What if I can do it by just like the biggest, the thing that I have found, like, like Tammy, I'm not gonna put you on the spot. <laughs> I was gonna ask you who your best friend is, but I know a lot of them, so I wouldn't want any, but let's just pick one. Who's one of your best friends right now? Just name, one. first name. Your wife, Maria. Okay, perfect. I, and I would agree with that. So she's one of my best friends too, by the way. So is Maria your best friend because she comes over and washes your car every Saturday morning, mows your yard, and does your laundry? No. No. Now, would she do that if you, if, if, if you needed it? Oh, yeah. Of course, right? Of course. But that's not why she's your best friend. Why is she, your, why is she one of your best friends? Uh, well, she listens to me. Yes. She laughs with me. Yes. She cries with me. Yes. Um, she pays attention to me. Yes. She loves on me. That's it. That's the name of the game. If somebody wants to know what's the secret sauce for having the fewest amount of steps, the fewest amount of uh, money, you don't have to spend a bunch of money to get referrals. All you got to do is think, 
who is my best friend as you're listening to this why is that person my best friend take those same strategies techniques and bring them into your business life that's it that's very few moving parts so my best relationships my best business relationships isn't because i come over to their house and clean their house or do this or do that or do this or do that it's just it's a genuine we we like each other which by the way as you're as you're looking to work with agents make sure that you like them you don't have to if somebody's a jerk 20% of your agents are going to be 80% of your headaches. 80%. Get rid of that 20%. And that's going to free up 80% of your headaches. So now you have 80% more time to find more of the 20% that's going to send you 80% of your business. So, all right. So number one, call, call your list call, call, and then call people that you know on there already. Call agents that you already know. Now, another thing that we recommend you doing in our, in our training, uh, which by the way, uh, if you would like us to get on the, if you'd like to get on the horn, and, and have a, uh, so we, we own a, a coaching group, right, for, for loan officers called the Freedom Club. If you ever wonder, gee, I wonder what that's like. If you'd like to get on the horn, we'll give you, we'll give you a, a, a sample. We'll give you a free one-hour coaching call. It'll be just like a normal standard coaching call that we do uh, to these same people that are, that are having these, uh, some of them are having 10 and 20 times and $1.5 billion in closings and some five, some five or six closings a month. Uh, there's a link somewhere on this page. If you're watching this on the website, it's, it's loanofficersstrategycall.com, loanofficersstrategycall.com. If you go to that uh, side of the link or you'll see something here about a sample coaching call, uh, click the link, doesn't cost anything, keep your credit card in your wallet and, uh, and, and see how some of this stuff works. And we can talk about some of these uh, scripts like in great detail and not as a cookie cutter, but like for you, what would be the specific way for you that we would help you in my belief to have epic growth in your business without cold calling, without uh, uh, no weekends or evenings, and, uh, and and be epic growth. Like, how do we do that? So we'd love to love to help you with that with you. But anyway, so once you have that was a did you like that little ad that I slipped <laughs> yes, in there? Was I that did. My, my my little uh, shameless Good plug? Job. Yeah, my shameless plug there. So um, so when we call on these agents that we uh, that we know is we bring up the list, look on there. Who do we know now? I think the best people that we know that is oftentimes overlooked is those agents that we've worked with in the past. And so there's a thing that we call the just ask calls, which is the uh, Tuesday update call. Some people call them, but it's not a, to me, it's not an update. It's asking for a business. It's getting more business from people that's already doing business with you or has done business with you in the past. And I'm reminded of the people at the mall, they're handing out with plates of chicken, chicken teriyaki and they give you a little piece and you taste it, you go, man, that was freaking awesome. That was some good chicken. And if it's lunchtime or dinner time, and, and, and that's what you're there for, you go, man, I tasted that one. I already know what it's going to be like because I already tasted it. I, yes, I would. I'd like some more of that. So calling those agents that you work in the past. So what I recommend that you do is, again, you get that qualified list, print it up, look on there. Who on there have you closed either listing side or buyer side in the last two years? Those are some great people to call on because they've already tasted your, your, an awesome piece of your, your, your steak, your tofu, depending upon your, your vegan uh, thoughts. So they've been through your process they've before. They've been through your process before. Yeah. And I have found, Tammy, that even if it didn't go perfect, because, uh, hey, it doesn't always. It, Nobody's it, perfect. If it always closes perfect for you, you're not closing enough loans. I can tell you that. My daddy used to tell me, if you don't skin your knees from time to time, you're not running fast enough. So I have found that even if it didn't close perfect, Oftentimes, I'll still get referrals from those people just because, just by being, number one, just because I stepped up the plate and actually made the call to them, made the connection to them. And, uh, and uh, 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 number two, it goes back to people don't think about us near as much as we think they do. Maybe it didn't go, it didn't go well. It's been six months ago. These top producers have had closings month after month after month after month. Trust me, other things have not gone well. You don't know what normal is. Normal isn't everything going perfect all the time. And these top producers, that's not their expectation because they know that because their volume, a certain percentage is going to go awry. And if one of yours happens to go awry, they haven't been thinking about that for the last six months. And so I know when I first got into this game, I was afraid of calling somebody if it didn't go just right. That was a huge mistake that I found out I'm just not that important. They don't think about me all the time. Just call them. Just call them. It's just that simple. So pull up the list. Who do you know? Who have you closed with in the last two years uh, to call those people up? And like, let's say if it's a listing agent, it's real simple. Just call them up. Hey, well, we had our closing. 
uh, uh, back in May, it was at 123 Main Street, and then go on with the rest of the script of how we, how we meet him for coffee. And uh, it's just real simple stuff. And most of the time, I find that when I make this call is, is they're going to remember who you are, you know, cause again, you're reminding them. I was the, I was a listing at one, two, three main street. And one thing I found about these agents is they remember their listings. They remember their listings, like the back of their hand, like their phone number. And so like even somebody like uh, one of our coaches, uh, Mary Carroll, uh, she closes a ton of real estate deals as, as a realtor uh, every month. And if I mention a house that she helped me buy, even if it was 10 years ago, Oh, I remember that. You know, and so they, they remember their, they remember these addresses cause they went, they did the listing presentation there. You know, they have a lot more time involved with the transactions than what we do. So, all right. Yeah. Uh, another way that I really like is agents that are really good friends of yours and good referral partners currently right now Yes. is to sit them down and just say, I love working with you. Mm. You're amazing. In fact, if there was a magic button somewhere on earth that I could push, and out of the sky would fall other agents like you. Man, I'd be mashing that button all day, every day, twice on Sunday. Who else do you know that does business like you and then name off their good traits? I want someone who has the sense of humor that you have. I want someone who has the work ethic you have. I want someone who has the integrity you have. I want to have, you know, work with someone who smiles like you do and makes me feel as good. As you. Who else do you know? I find that stallions run with other stallions. Mm. And so they're probably going to know someone else in the business who does business like you. And any answer they give you is going to be a good one because it's either yes, I have a referral for you. They're going to introduce you to someone or they're going to say, no, you're my secret weapon. I love you. And gosh, that should make you feel good. I don't want to you share know what? it. Mm. Yeah. Hey, I respect that. And go find business somewhere else. There's plenty yeah. out there. Yeah. But if they say, yeah, I know somebody, they don't even have to make the introduction. They just got to give you a name. And now you call that person and it's still not a cold call. It was a referral. Yeah. Hey, I am very good friends with Realtor Mary. She mentioned your name the other day and said that you were tops in the area like she is. And it always gets me thinking and really curious about how does someone who's already a top agent admire and think highly of another agent? They're com competitors, but she's thinking really highly of you. I'd love to buy you a cup of coffee to see why she feels so strongly about her competition. Mm -hmm. So you can use that with anyone. If you belong to a BNI group, if you make a list of your whole circle of influence, and then you ask all of those people, who do you know? If you had to sell your house in one day and get top dollar, who do you know that could do that? They're going to give you a real estate agent. And now you call that agent and drop the name of the person who gave you. Hey, I was talking to um, attorney Joe the other day and we got on the subject of real estate and he said, you're the only one he would trust for all his real estate needs. I have got to meet with you and find out what you're doing to create such rabid loyalty, a rabid fan base. From, from attorney from Joe. A, from an attorney. And so now when, when, when you say, hey, Bob, this is Carl, this is who I trust. Now, Bob, we know each other now, right? That's now, that's now a warm and fuzzy contact because it's just like uh, celebrity endorsements. Like when this celebrity gets up and says, this is the coffee that I drink, that coffee is now a warm and, uh, a warm and fuzzy referral. Right. That's why the, that's what the celebrity endorsement is all about is they take somebody that, you know, they introduce you to something you don't know. And now, you know, that, too, because you think with well, Bob likes it. I trust Bob. If Bob, if this is who Bob uses and I trust, I use Bob, I trust Bob, then I'm going to use Tammy, too. And that's it's just a, it's such a simple thing. And I think so many people avoid these simple things. And instead, they interject. First, I got to do that and this and that and this and that and this. And that's why people that use those methodologies have so such low production uh, compared to, to what we see uh, in our group is because they're, they're putting in too many steps. And I think it all goes back. I really do. I think the source of the Nile is the feeling of not worthy that I have to, I have to bring these bags of, bags of gold. Otherwise, I'm not worthy to come into your house. Well, and that's, a, that's something I hear a lot is... Uh, if I call them, I don't have anything of value to bring, but you do. You, that's you're the, the value. See, that's, 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 that's the you're whole thing. The that's like, that's like, uh, Tammy, if you come over to my house for dinner, oh, you might bring a glass of wine or you might bring uh, a glass. I'll bring a bottle. Yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, 
that's not what makes that evening special to me and the lovely Mrs. White when you and Ron come over is because we get to spend time with you. Do we enjoy that little glass of wine? Of course, right? Is it nice but that you brought over? But around the fire pit, visiting, sharing life. Uh, it's, we've it's, known each other a long time. We've watched yeah. each other's kids grow up and yeah. that's where the value is, is which, the person. Which is amazing that we've known each other for so long, even though we're very, very young. Very we're not young. Very young. I think, we, I think we were three when we met. We were three when we met because we've known each other now for like 25 years, I think, something yes. like that. Yeah. And, and while we bring each other a bottle of wine per se, or a little uh, Harley Davidson, little, you know, picture trinket to hang on the wall or something like that. That's not where our value to each other comes. Our value from each other comes by who we are and just paying a little attention uh, or showing a little appropriate love, right? That's, that's yeah. the name of the game. Well, what we found is that 25% of people will love you no matter what you do. Yeah. You, you could, you know, we, we, we lovingly say you could do armpit farts and they would think it was funny. And it's like, oh my gosh, I want to hang out with that guy. He's really funny. Yeah. 25% to use your gold analogy, 25% will hate you no matter what you do. You throw coins at them and they would complain, ouch, you hit me. Yeah. Um, and so the secret in life, guys, and the other 50% are on the fence. They're on the fence either way. They yeah. like you until you do something wrong or they don't like you until you do something right, but then they hate you again if it goes wrong again. Yeah. So they're on the fence. So the secret in life, guys, is to find your 25%. And so when you live in a town that has a million people and 1,000 qualified real estate agents, you're only looking for 12 or 13 kids. Yeah. So it, it yeah. And so it, the and, value is you. And, and, the value and, is you. And keeping in mind, you don't have to live in a town of a million people. We just talked a couple episodes ago about our uh, very dear friend, Jen Connolly, who lives in a very small town. She ranges between a 10 and a, a 31% market share in her town that uh, she does, she's, she's uh, been through our training, has never, ever made a cold call, and truly has epic business in a very small town. I can't remember how small her town is, but it's small. It's, small. it's yeah. real small. And, yeah. and, and her town is real small. I can't remember. It's like 20,000 people. And it's the largest city in the county, right? In fact, if I remember right, it's, I, I think I'm right on this. It's the only city in her county. So it's an incredibly rural area. And this lady's knocking out of the park. Like she's doing some serious stuff, not doing any cold calling. Uh, and she's not working weekends or evenings. She has epic growth. So she does all three of those things that we're known for, epic growth, uh, no weekends, no evenings, no cold call in a very, very small town. Because one thing on this, uh, uh, like uh, getting business from business you're already doing, it reminds me of our uh, one of our Freedom Club leaders and a very dear friend of ours, uh, Roger McGuire, who's down in Sarasota, Florida. Half of his business comes from Chicago. Now, he used to live in Chicago, got tired of the winter, decided to move down to Florida. His business now is 50% Sarasota, Florida area and 50% Chicago. I asked him the other day, uh, it, it, since he's been living here now for, I think it's like three years he's been living here, give or take, has his business in Chicago dwindled down? He said, no, it's actually grown because again, not it's making consistent. any, yeah, not making any cold calls. He's calling those agents that either they know, like he's either getting referrals from agents to call other agents, or he's calling those agents that he's doing business with, or he's calling the title companies that he's doing business with asking for introductions to other agents. And he can't, you know, he can't bring bags of gold or he can't, he's not bringing anything to the table other than a little bit of time, a little bit of attention, listening to them. Um, and he's epically growing his business. That, and that, he's an awesome guy. He's an awesome guy. He's like one of the nicest guys that I know. And it's just a, a real honor to have him in our group, which we have the coolest people in our group. I'm we just going to tell you that, you know, cool people attract cool people. So yeah. whoever you are, that's what you're going to attract. And I think that's been one of our secret sauces. So. Right. And, and, you know, again, back to the, the coaching call, the free coaching call, the complimentary coaching call that you can have. We can go over some of these scripts. There's just too many yeah. um, to go. So if, if, you, if you need help with scripting, because that is really all um, this is, is knowing what you need to say and have it written in front of you so that you don't get uh, that panic feeling. You don't yeah. let the fear overcome mm -hmm. you. You just say what's on the script. And, um, and, and the, and the, in the knowing that you're worthy of achieving this greatness. Yes. You know, I'm just, a, I'm just a real big thing about uh, that part is that, uh, if you, if you find yourself in a, in a hard spot, uh, man, just know that you are, you are worthy. And, uh, there's wondrous things in your life. Hey, we all go through hard times. 
right? We all go through hard times. But, but remember, when you, anytime you're going through hard times, I kind of think of it like, I hope it's okay. I'm going to go off, off script here. Uh, not that we have a script, but I kind of think of it like cow manure. So when cow manure falls on you, you think, oh, this is stinky and it smells bad, but it's fertilizer. And even more growth comes from that. And that you, you follow that? So anytime you think somebody's dumping on you or a situation's dumping on you, just understand that's fertilizer and wonderful things will come from it. So if you're going through a hard time in your, uh, in your business right now, I just understand that's fertilizer. That's going to put you into action. Or maybe you've been stagnant here for the last uh, year or two and you haven't grown your business and, and it kind of stinks like cow manure. Just understand that's fertilizer. And maybe that's why you're listening to this podcast today is that fertilizer is going to cause you to go into action. And let me try one of these uh, sample uh, coaching calls that uh, Carl and Tammy and Mike and Ralph uh, do. And, uh, and let me see how they can apply it in my business. That's uh, specifically for, for me, you know, for, for you is what I'm saying. Uh, just click on the link that's on this page. We'd love to walk you through it. So uh, Tammy, I see we're up on time. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll do another, uh, another episode. Uh, Cause we have more ways that we have epic growth in our mortgage business. Don't work the evenings and weekends and having no cold calls we're going to be doing a series on this. And uh, this was number one, didn't know how far we'd get, but we have a lot more notes here on our page. So, uh, so Tammy, first of all, thanks for, thanks for, uh, oh, thanks for having me. I yeah. love this. Yeah. So you, you do great. Uh, for those of you watching on camera, obviously you know that uh, she's the brains and I'm the, I'm the pretty face here. So uh, no, that's not true. <laughs> you got, you're a total package. Oh, I, I really appreciate you. you. Yeah. You. So you've been a great inspiration for me. So anyway, so thanks a lot for, uh, for listening uh, this, uh, this week uh, to the podcast episode. Uh, thank you so much for those five-star reviews. It helps us get the message out to other people. It shows your appreciation, which is always cool. And we read each and every single one of them. So, um, so maybe I'll start reading some of them on the air to get, just to give uh, the attention to those people that are kind enough to do oh, that. Wow, that's so, a great idea. Yeah, we'll start, we'll, we'll start doing that on the very next episode, actually. So uh, go in there and do your five-star review, and maybe yours will be the one we read next week. If you think this message uh, would be helpful for some of your loan officers, if you're a branch manager, or some of your friends, if they're loan officers, or to your branch manager, if you're a loan officer, uh, please forward this to them again. That, uh, that helps us get the message out. So uh, thanks for being here. We'll talk to you. For those of you that uh, step up to the plate and, uh, and get your complimentary uh, coaching call, uh, looking forward to talking with you and seeing what you're doing in your business. Because I find it's the small tweaks. It's not, almost nobody has to completely revamp everything. It's little small tweaks like that. So looking forward to seeing what your small tweak is. So thanks again for listening. And we'll see you right here on your next episode of Loan Officer Freedom. And we'll talk to you when you call in. All right, bye-bye, everybody. Bye.